Shalom, shalom, all praises to the Most High, Yahuwah, Bashem, Yahushua HaMashiach, all praises to His begotten Son, Yeshua, uh, Jesus Christ. Um, today, I just want to address some issues and things that I've seen. Um, but before I get into that, um, let me just share some things with y'all. Um, I was raised as a preacher's kid, you know, been around the church for a long time, uh, heard all kinds of sermons in, you know, day in, day out, sitting in church and so forth. Um, you know, I fellowship with Christians, Jehovah Witnesses, Messianic Jews, non-Messianic Jews, Hebrew Israelites, uh, you know, uh, Yashaolites, um, and people of all different walks of life, period. But um, the thing that I've come to understand is that uh, when it comes to rightly dividing this word, regardless of what a person's uh, background or their faith that they proclaim, um, a lot of times, you know, um, we have to be able to examine ourselves and check our own spirits um, and make sure that you know, regardless if you call yourself Christian, Hebrew, Israelite, Jehovah Witness, Messianic Jew, uh, or, or whatever the case may be, that you're rightfully dividing the word. And um, I have came to the understanding that regardless of what any background or what faith that anyone's proclaiming, um, individuals still don't rightfully um, uh, divide the word. So I'm going to address one issue right now. For example, right? You'll have someone that says, all right, well, you know, um, I don't like the Hebrew Israelites and um, I'm going to uh, share this scripture. So they'll say Amos chapter 5, verse 21 through 23. It says, I hate, I despise your feast days and I would not smell in your solemn assemblies. Though ye offer me burnt offerings and your meat offerings, I would not accept them. Neither will I regard the peace offering of your fat beasts. Take thou away from me the noise of thy songs, for I will not hear the melodies of thy vows. They'll read that scripture and then come at the Hebrew Israelites. Oh, see, God don't care about your solemn feast. So we don't have to do Leviticus 23 and, you know, keep the Sabbath day and so forth. And, and that still applies to today. But guess where the deception is going at? Check this out. Who was king in this time? Let's go to Amos chapter 1. Alright, it says in verse 1, The words of Amos, who was among the herdmen of Tekoa, which he saw concerning Israel in the days of Uzziah king of Judah, and in the days of Jeroboam, the son of Joash king of Israel, two years before the earthquake. Now, key... Jeroboam and what did Jeroboam do that the most high said made him say I don't like your feast watch this now if you go to uh, 1 Kings 1 Kings chapter 12 verse 32 and it says and Jeroboam ordained a feast in the 8th month on the 15th day of the month, like unto the feast that is in Judah, and he offered upon the altar, so did he in Bethel, sacrificing unto the cows that he had made, and he placed in Bethel the priest of the high, uh, he, he placed in Bethel the priest of the high places which he had made. Uh-oh, rightfully dividing the word, right? So, once again, someone could have, as we would say, you know, church hurt, even Hebrew Israelite camp hurt. But still, when it comes to the feast that was being despised right here in Amos chapter 5, uh, 21 through 23, this is not talking about the feast days in Leviticus 23, if you're going to rightfully divide the word. Because Jeroboam set up his own feast, offer his own incense, offer his own calves that the Most High despises. All right. Now, another thing that a person might use, Colossians chapter 2, verse 16 through 23. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of an holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days 
which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. Once again, verse 17, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body of uh, but the body is of Christ. Now, someone gets stuck on verse 16. It says, let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of an holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days. And then once again, start attacking. Don't be judging me about the Sabbath day and this, that, and the third, and this, that, and the fourth. You know what I mean? Don't be judging me. Okay. Now, verse 17. Which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. Answer that question. How is the Sabbath, the Sabbath, a shadow of things to come? That answer could be found starting in Isaiah chapter, uh, I believe it's 66. Go in the book right now. And what does it say toward the end of Isaiah? All right, starting at verse 22. Key verse, it says, For as the new heavens and the new earth which I will make shall remain before me, saith the Lord, so shall your seed and your name remain. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith the Lord. Verse 23, let's read that again. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith the Lord. Now, notice in verse 22, what did it say? For as the new heavens and the new earth which I will make shall remain before me, saith the Lord, so shall your seed and your name remain. But notice it says, for as the new heavens and the new earth. What is this new heavens and what is this new earth where the Sabbath day all flesh is going to come to worship him? All right. Revelations 21. Oh, snap. Look like my, uh, are we going to go on the uh, computer because my page is ripped out. All right, Revelations 21. All right, verse 1. Just like in Isaiah, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, and I John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. All right. So the new Jerusalem, um, the second coming of the Messiah. And when he sets up the new Jerusalem, Sabbath is a automatic thing that will be held and all flesh will come and worship him on Sabbath day. That's just the truth. But using those scriptures and twisting them, as Peter said in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 14 through 17, that some people will do um, with the wisdom that was given to Paul, but those that are unlearned are going to twist those scriptures. Stop taking these scriptures like Amos chapter 5 that was against Jeroboam, or stop taking these scriptures um, like in Colossians and trying to use them to give you an excuse of why a person shouldn't ever keep the Sabbath or why a person feels like it's okay to uh, you know keep on continuing doing pagan things and making it seem as if the the uh, fathers of feast days ain't righteous because last time I checked the Messiah said we got to be reborn again right and I believe that's in John chapter 3 if I remember correctly Using the internet right now. Um, yep, John chapter 3. So, 
It says we got to be reborn again. Now, what does this have to do with feast days? Okay. Now, let's check this out. And there's no coincidence, no coincidence that this is set up this way. Now, John chapter 3, verse 1, it says, There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, and also verily, verily, that's amen, amen. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. Okay, now watch this. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5. Giving a precept to what I'm about to share with y'all. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5 says, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou came forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Now, if one has to be reborn again and someone feels like they don't have to keep the feast days, then explain to me this. And I really mean this. Explain to, explain to me this. How come the feast days match up with a woman's pregnancy? Because the egg drops down on the 14th day inside of the womb. And on the first month on the 14th day is Passover. That egg has 24 hours to be fertilized. One day after Passover is the Feast of Unleavened Bread, 24 hours from Passover. Now, once that egg is fertilized, it has two to six days to be grafted to the side of the womb. Well, it just so happens that the first fruits harvest is two to six days in the middle of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Okay. And also, at uh, 50 days of gestation, a baby starts looking like a human. Just so happens that a Jew belief on the Feast of Unleavened Bread, you have Pentecost. Pentecost, Pent represents five. Um, you know, uh, Seth is seven, Ak is eight, Nova is nine, Dec is ten, like a decimal uh, uh, by tenths, right? So the Pent represents five, and Greek is Pentecost, they represent fifty. So uh, the Feast of uh, Shavuot uh, is a, a Feast of Weeks, so seven days times seven weeks is forty nines, and on the fiftieth day, is the uh, uh, count from the feast the first day of feast of unleavened bread is Pentecost all right so just so happens that you have the giving of the Holy Spirit at this time at the same time a baby starts looking like a human okay then around seven months in the womb a baby starts developing their hearing well it just so happens that on the seventh month on the first day we have the feast of trumpets then the next feast day uh, oh, actually, let's start with the baby. Uh, you have hemio, um, hem, um, uh, uh, hemoglobin blood cells that carry oxygen to the baby. Um, just so happens the day of atonement. He was in atonement and gave his blood for our sins. Um, you have the Feast of Tabernacles. Um, Oh, in the womb, uh, the baby uh, starts breathing on his own, starts separating from the mother. Well, uh, the Mashiach had uh, came and tabernacled amongst us. All right. And exactly roughly uh, 280 days of gestation is roughly nine months. You got nine months from Passover to Feast of Dedication. And what happens? A baby is born. And guess what? A person is dedicated to life dedicated to Christ. So um, his feast days deal with being inside the womb and match up with a baby's uh, development in the womb. But, you know, maybe it's just me, you know, because the, 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 uh, the, uh, the uh, teacher uh, in, the, in Israel didn't know how to be reborn again without going physically, uh, fleshly inside of a womb. He couldn't understand. So in the spiritual eyes, Hey, one can keep the feast days and be reborn again and go through the process as if they were in the womb. Why is that if his feast days don't matter, As like I said before? Um, 
those scriptures that people are using is brain is um, being taken out of context. Those are for people like Jeroboam who set up their own feast days. Um, just like in Colossians, it says, don't let nobody judge you. Okay, no one's judge. I'm not judging a person if they keep Sabbath or not. I know if a person got to work on the Sabbath, whether they be Christian or Israelite, they're going to work and feed their family and not keep the Sabbath. But, you know, we're under certain uh, things right now. And, um, you know, if a person doesn't keep the Sabbath and they are going to work, and uh, even though we're not supposed to work, um, you know, if they got to feed their family and not be an infidel to their household, I salute you. I wouldn't judge you in that type of sense. You know what I mean? Um, and that's what I really believe it, a lot of things really come down to. But uh, please stop taking these scriptures, making it seem like the holy days and the feast days is not uh, something that uh, we are supposed to not keep, but then turn around and do everything pagan. We are not pagan Jews, we're not pagan Christians, even though a lot of paganism has infiltrated. And um, start respecting the Most High and um, His feast days. And um, also, too, start rightfully dividing His Word. Because as a person that's going to go forth and make a video, we get the most, uh, we get the most judgment. Um, if, if it don't line up, the Most High going to come against us first. So when we make videos like this, we're under judgment um, more than the person that's on the other side listening. So once again, like I said, that scripture in Amos or a lot of these other scriptures that talk about he don't care about these solemn feasts and in the uh, you know the feast days and so forth. Make sure you understand in what context is being used. Don't let somebody just read you a couple verses and then give their opinion and push their agenda. All right. With that being said, salute, salute.